Hello and welcome to the first in a series of videos on ARM Cortex M4 development using the STM32 F4 series of microcontrollers. My name is Sam Walsh from the School of Electronics at the University of Manchester. And in this first video, I'm just going to take you through the absolute basics of setting up the Kyle IDE. The Kyle IDE is a standard um, development platform. We're also going to take you through installing the ST software packs. The board we're using is the STM32 F4 for Nucleo, which you can hopefully see here on the webcam on the side. And I'm going to take you through yeah, installing the software packs for that and then installing the drivers so we can use that on Windows. So let's get started. ARM um, offer three different kinds of processor. They have the Cortex-M series, which are the microcontroller series, the Cortex-R series, which are the reliability and real-time series, and the Cortex-A series, which are the application processors, which you'd kind of find in mobile phones, tablets, some simple laptops have this kind of processor in there. Now the R series are designed with reliability in mind, so you, you likely find those in the automotive industry or on planes, anything that requires super precise timing and reliability. Now the Cortex M series, which is ARM's range of microcontrollers, are the ones we're going to be concentrating on, and specifically the M4 series. And the board we're going to be using is the STM32 F401 RE Nucleo Development Board which you can see down here. Uh, it's quite a nice board. It has a Cortex M4 on it, uh, an 84 megahertz processor, and 512 kilobytes of RAM, and an Arduino shield uh, footprint, so you can use any of the, the Arduino Uno shields on it. Uh, but ST aren't the only manufacturer of ARM um, cores. Uh, there's actually Freescale, which stocked the entire range, uh, NXP, uh, uh, Texas Instruments also stock arm boards, Nordic Semiconductor, Silicon Labs, Spansion, Cypress, and Xilinx even include them now on, on some of the, their FPGAs. So there's a lot of different manufacturers to choose from. And the idea is that you can write your code for one ARM core, for example, the Cortex M4, and with a bit of tweaking, it should hopefully run on all these different manufacturers' uh, microcontrollers. Not to say that that's going to work totally in practice, but that's the idea. So yeah, so we're going to be using this uh, this board here for uh, for our series, and the IDE we're going to be using is called Kyle. Now Kyle's ARM's official IDE, and it can program pretty much any ARM microcontroller you can throw at it. Anything from these manufacturers should should run uh, within Kyle. Now it is quite expensive, but there is a free version to use, which is code limited to 32 kilobytes. Now we are going to be using the free version in this series, and as long as you're not doing anything advanced like networking or USB comms, then I don't think you should go over that 32 kilobyte limit. Now as well as Kyle, there's IAR Workbench, which is another industry standard IDE. Now we're using Kyle for ours, but you could we could have easily have just used um, IAR instead. So that's one to check out if you don't want to look at Kyle or you just want to see what else is out there. And there's also manufacturer specific IDEs as well, like Atmel have their own um, IDE, as well as TI have Code Composer Studio. And then also there's a few open source efforts out there, such as Kukox IDE, which I've tried. I think it's Eclipse based, but uh, it's, it's not a bad IDE. And there's also no code limit on there. So if you do go over the 32 kilobytes and you can't use some of the licenses that we have within the school, then you should check out Kukox for running at home. Or there's a GNU um, Eclipse plugin as well, which has no code limit and runs within Eclipse as just a plugin. So there's quite a hell of a lot of options available to us. But for this series, we're going to be using Kyle. So to download Kyle, you just need to go to kyle.com, then download and product downloads and MDK ARM. Now, if you fill out these uh, this form here, which has all my details on there, but oh well, they're all available to the public anyway, and then go down and press submit, it should take you to this page here and you just want to click and download that file. Now I'm going to pause the video here while that downloads. Right, so it's downloaded now. And I should really say this is only available on Windows as far as I'm aware. So unfortunately for those of you with a MacBook or who like to run Linux, you're going to have to install Windows to run this IDE. 
So there's not any options that you need to change during the install. You just need to put your details in. It will just begin to install. You just have to wait for this to install. So when it's completed, you'll just see this and we don't need to see the release notes. So press finish. Now this takes you to the pack installer. Now once you let it finish refreshing all the different pack lists, you'll see all the different manufacturers down the side because this IDE can program any manufacturer's chips. If, if you look here, you can see ST, 521 different devices. In total, 3,000 different microcontrollers can be programmed with this IDE. So because we're using the STM F401 RE, we're going to need to click there and install the board support packages and the device support packages for that board. So if you just click install and install and you'll see down here it'll it'll install those libraries and that includes all the header files and source and example source code for those that series of microcontroller those packs have just finished installing and you can see now it says up to date on, the, on that pack now if you go over to examples you can see that that board support package the nucleo board support package came with uh, two examples for the nucleo f401 ra it comes with Blinky, which is blinking an LED, and then RTX Blinky, which is using a real-time operating system to blink an LED. So they've both got the same outcome, but with two different styles of coding. So if we click copy, and we'll just copy it to our documents, yep, and it'll open UVision once we're finished. Now, this is our example project. I'm not gonna go into the code right now, but what I'm gonna do is plug my Nucleo in to USB. Oops. There we go, and you should be able to see the uh, light flashing on it there. Now we're going to actually program this now. So if we click load, it should say flash download failed, can't find the board. And if we click this little wand here, it brings up the options, and we go to debug and settings. We can see it says no ST link detected. Now ST link is is this board here at the top at the top of our board. It's, this is the programmer, the, the debugger. It's called an ST link, and the reason it's not detected is because Windows hasn't installed it. So if we open up Device Manager, we can see look unknown devices there. ST link debug. So we need to go online and find the drivers for that board before we can use it. So we need to go back to the main STM page. So yeah, if you just search STM 32 F401 RE Nucleo, we'll get to this page on ST's website. And if we go to design resources, this is where you find all the documentation, by the way. Uh, there's a user manual for, for the Nucleo board. There's also all the Altium files, but they're gonna be on the school's GitHub, which I'll explain in, in another video, I think. Now the thing we want is the ST link drivers. So if we go to here, we should find ST link 009 driver for um, Windows 7 and, and 8. So we need to download that. And yep, that's downloaded. And just extract it, extract all. To yep, download this phone, and if we go to, I'm running a 64-bit processor, so we need to click 64. But 86 would have been fine for you if you're running a 32-bit. And now it says device updated. So if we go back to uh, device manager, we can see there we've got the ST-Link debug. Now if we load up Kyle and we go back to our uh, wand and we go to debug and settings we can now see it's detected the um, board there and it's given it an ID code. Now if you can't see anything it may be because you don't have this set to SW and it may be set to JTAG. If you set it to SW uh, the board should show up and if we di if we disconnect the board now it should disappear he says. <laughs> I think we may maybe need to go back yep yeah, no SC link detected so I'll plug it back in and yeah, there it is 
So if we now click build, which is this button just here, it should build all of the source files and buildings complete. And then we can click load to program the board into the flash of the, of the actual board. So you can see it now programming, verifying. And if we look there, you should hopefully see LED one flashing on and off. It may be quite hard to see. I'll just get the, just get the webcam further in. So, yep, you should be able to see that light going green. And that's it, everything's working. So I'll end this video here and we'll start the next one where I explain how this code works.